This is Love TV's Evening News for Thursday, July 1st. It is the start of the third quarter of the year, and tonight there is a lot to tell you about on the broadcast. So let's start with a check of the stories that are making headlines today. Keycocker Village gets multi-million dollar water system. Belize Defense Force responds to allegations of illegal activities in the Toledo District. And the Belizean basketballers prepare for money time in the upcoming Central Basket Tournament. Details of these stories and more are coming up on the broadcast tonight. But first, here is a word from our sponsors. Good evening, Belize. With the Thursday edition of Love TV's Evening News, I am Patrick Jones. The island of Key Corker is roughly five miles long and about a mile and a half across at its widest point. And although surrounded by water, people on the island have been fighting an uphill battle to find a potable drinking water. But all that changed this year when a state-of-the-art water production facility was installed on the island. Today, it all culminated with the commissioning of the new Key Corker water system, and Love News was present for the proud moment. The symbolic ribbon cutting today by Minister of Tourism and Area Representative Manuel Heredia ushers in a new era for the people of Key Cocker Village. To me this is one of the best things that can ever happen to Key Cocker. For many years we have been experiencing problems with the wells that we have over here and in particular Key Cocker is a tourist destination like, like San Pedro and then it, it's not a pleasant experience when they are taking a shower. So and I have experienced it personally and hence the reason for talking together, coming together, government and BWS and making sure that this can happen. So today, this is a wonderful experience for me and I think for the people of Kikaka, it is more than a dream, a dream coming true today and I think it will serve both the locals, the business community and in particular the tourism industry. For the first time in a long time, they now have access to potable drinking water. Alberto Villanueva is the chairman of Key Cocker Village Council. We have had many issues in terms of the, the, the safety of our water. This project has been in an inception since 1989 and it's now a reality in 2010, 21 years later. And it provides a big economic impact for us in terms of tourism because if we don't have adequate water, tourists will not come to Key Cocker. So it helps there and also with the residents knowing that they have clean, safe drinking water. The water system, complete with a reverse osmosis plant, is jointly funded by the government of Belize and Belize Water Services Limited to the tune of $3 million. On hand for the inaugural ceremonies was Chief Executive Officer for Belize Water Services, Alvan Haynes. About three or four years ago, a Spanish company had put in a bid to do a water and a water and sewer project here in Kikaka. The cost was in excess of about 10 million US, and the government at the time looked at it and couldn't find all the funds. So BWS was asked to look at doing only the water portion. Um, we estimated that to be about three million dollars or so, and the government. Uh, and BWS reached an agreement that government would contribute $1.75 million and BWS would contribute the rest. So the project officially started two years ago or so, um, in February 2008, and um, with a groundbreaking ceremony. Two years later, this is a result. As explained by acting plant manager Raymond Williams, the facility is a state-of-the-art operation that will bring much benefit to the people of Keycocker Village for years to come. The way this machine works is we bring in the water from the well. The water comes in from the well and the water passes through this filter. This filter. See this is the feed water going here? The water passes through this filter before it goes through the machine. When the water passes through here, the water goes through the shaft there at 520 psi. The water goes through the shaft there and this is a turbo. When the water gets here, this is a turbo. This up the psi to 800 psi. Then the water goes through these vessels. In these vessels we have some filters to what we call them membranes. These membranes, the water goes through here at 800 psi. And the water comes through here, these membranes fit, and the water stored it and bring the water through. We size this system for, for growth based on projections, possibly for up to the next 10 years at least, um, unless the, the growth, especially with tourism, um, exceeds that expectation. However, 
the, the building is capable of housing ad adequate expansion to the plant, so it's just a matter of putting in modular expansion to the plant should the actual water demand on a daily basis increase more than expected. Prior to today, the over 2,000 residents and visitors to Key Corker Village used a combination rudimentary water system, hand dug wells and rainwater vats to meet their water needs. Minister Heredia told Love News that compared to what was in place before, the price tag is well worth the investment. That is definitely sure. When, whenever you have infrastructure or the amenities that it needed to improve uh, an industry, definitely it has a big effect on it. This plant carries a price tag of $3 million. Is that an adequate uh, investment, if you will, not only for the residents but for tourism on a whole? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and I feel that and, and at, at this point in time, I think it is and, adequate enough. And as the years go by, there will be need for improvement. Just like uh, and we can take an example from my other uh, com community, San Pedro, we started with something probably smaller than this, and today and it is over 400,000 gallons that is being produced. So similarly, as, as Kikaka progresses, so will the infrastructure and progress also. And along with that progress comes the reality that consumers will now have to pay substantially more for this new essential service. It is an issue for villagers. Um, we are looking at it. Uh, we hope that we have the where we are on the good side of the PUC to see if that they will be able to help alleviate that in one mother or the next. But you know, I'm very confident that the residents will will hook up onto the system. Haynes says he expects that the rate will not be as high as neighboring San Pedro town, but significantly higher than what we pay on the mainland. And over time, he expects that BWS will be able to recoup its investment. Well, in all, all BWS systems, we cater for contingencies. There is a large storage tank, 150,000 gallons. The lower part of the building that you see there um, is a storage tank. Uh, basically, that has enough supply for one to two days, depending on the demand and possibly more. Um, if there's a break in the distribution mains or in, in the water mains, we're capable of dealing with that usually within two to three hours to minimize downtime. Uh, so our operational plans are contingency driven. We know what we're about, supplying water continuously as much as possible. Kikaka, we're proud to say, is a new system, it's well designed, so we expect minimal interruptions based on those kinds of things. Some additional details about the project worth mentioning are that the new water system includes five miles of distribution mains connected to a reservoir capable of holding 150,000 gallons of water. Of the total $3.05 million, government's contribution amounted to $1.7 million derived from the Commonwealth Debt Initiative. Belize Water Services provided $1.3 million. The International Monetary Fund has concluded its yearly Article 4 consultation for Belize, and according to a summary published today, Belize's economic activity stagnated during 2009. According to the IMF assessor, last year's stagnation was a result of the global financial downturn and the lingering effects from the floods of 2008. The IMF report said that growth was, has resumed since late 2009, but the recovery is still narrowly based, while inflation appears to be picking up somewhat, driven by the rise in fuel prices. For 2010, the mission expects growth to resume modestly and export prices and tourist receipts to recover slightly, allowing foreign reserves to stabilize at just over three months of imports of goods and services. Despite the recent tax revenue actions, the overall fiscal deficit is likely to widen in fiscal year 2010-2011, owing largely to upward pressure on primary current spending and increased investment, while the public debt would remain high. The overall banking system appears liquid and well capitalized, but the mission is concerned about the rise in non-performing loans. During its visit to Belize, which started on June 21st, the IMF mission met with Prime Minister Dean Barrow, the government's economic team, the private sector, and civil society. You're watching Love TV's Evening News. We will have more of today's stories for you right after these messages.